you've heard the expression an officer and a gentleman many, many times to describe many people in this city, New Delhi, a city of power. But I do not believe this description fits many people more perfectly and more deservingly than to my guest this week, Mr. S. Y. Qureshi, our new Chief Election Commissioner and a friend of p and Half Decade. Yes, speaker. Thank you very much for your kind words. Welcome to Walk the Talk. Well, We've had over place. these three and a half decades, yeah. God knows how many conversations. You know, how many times we have walked and how, how many, many times time we have involved. talked, yeah. but never, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, this way, not formally. Never formally. Yeah. So, wonderful to have you on Walk the Talk and wonderful to have you in this Thank position. you. Thank you. My, the, my the, pleasure. One of the most thankless positions in the country. Yeah. One of the most difficult positions for sure. And yet, one of the most rewarding. Uh, yes, indeed, very much. Why do you say so? So, why the most difficult and why the most rewarding? The most difficult because it is the biggest management exercise of any kind in the world, not just electoral management, any management. You know, the, look at the kind of people we employ, about 11 million people were uh, uh, deployed in the last general election. The last mile concept of any business or any service is most applicable to us because we have to reach the last voter. There are polling stations where uh, our parties have to walk literally three days and three nights because there is no other way to reach there, but, and we can't even leave them. So the logistic problems, uh, the sheer size and magnitude makes it very difficult. Rewarding in the sense that the, uh, the faith the nation has on the election commission and the fact that we are able to keep the democracy on the rails because of our credibility, the entire system, uh, that, that I think is the best reward. A half me after? You're, you're the only institution that the political class fears. Well, at least they respect, I would like to say. They respect, and uh, which is uh, which saying a lot. When you say no graffiti, there's no graffiti. When you say yeah. stop yeah. campaigning at 10 o'clock, they stop campaigning at 10 o'clock. Exactly. How did that happen? I mean, in a country where nobody respects yes. any law. Yes. Interestingly, you know, that, is, uh, that compliance is achieved not by any law, but by a unique uh, instrument that we have of model code of conduct. And they, there is no law about model code of conduct. It's a device which has been created by the political parties themselves. It's a voluntary code imposed uh, on themselves by them. And that's why the respect. And which is why we find when we give a notice to a very senior politician that we want your answer tomorrow by 5 o'clock. By next day, 4 o'clock, the response comes. That is the kind of compliance. But that's also because one of your predecessors actually proved that he could also bite. That EC, EC wasn't just barking, it could bite. Yes. Because he set aside just one election and that had a salutary effect. That's right. You are referring to Mr. Session. Of course, his yes. contribution is singular. He really made this institution visible. He, uh, he gave him uh, some teeth. But I would like to say that basic structure was in the constitution itself. Right. Hats off to the framers of the constitution who visualized this institution to be fiercely autonomous, fiercely independent. And uh, later on, the Supreme Court they have been the guardian of our autonomy. By judgment after judgment, they have strengthened us. There was a time when we could not transfer a, a, a subdivisional officer. Now the power to transfer was given to us uh, in a joint uh, 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 decree in which involved the uh, state government's election commission and Supreme Court uh, then directed that we, uh, we can ask anybody uh, to be posted wherever we want. There was a time when we wanted just one company of... Uh, the Parameter the, forces. Yes, one company. And it was being denied. And that was actually the provocation. But Supreme Court said, no, nothing doing. If the election commission wants uh, a force, you have to give. And we have used this to a great advantage, basically for free and fair election. That is our uh, ultimate test for, uh, for ourselves and for everybody. So this institution building, uh, which has happened over the past, say, two decades, uh, you say that this was scripted in the constitution, but somehow the institution had not yes. risen to its true potential. That, that, that is what? true intended potential. Yes. But I would say that even the initial uh, chief election commissioners, they made their own uh, quiet contribution. Right. Because also you must realize that the problems have, uh, have also increased subsequently. In the first 10 to 20 years, the, the booth capturing, the rigging, and the brawn power, and the, must, uh, the money power, they were non-existent. So as the problems are... Uh, well, also because first few elections were so one-sided that many of these issues did not, did not come up. You know, one party swept the whole country. So as elections became more contentious. Yeah, possibly.